Right, we'll try this one again. We are back on for the second attempt of tonight's live feed because my Wi-Fi here in Spain is playing up, it would seem. Fingers crossed. Now I am right next to the router, which is just behind me. We should have no problems, fingers crossed. Uh, what we discussed on the previous couple of minutes before we went was a little bit about the Avengers, nothing much fitness. Although one of you did ask what is the perfect post-workout shape when trying to build muscle. Um, and I said about for a male about 50 grams of protein, whey protein or pea protein, something like that, um, with some carbs. So for me, I always prefer to go for real food as opposed to things like dextrin and all these other little bits and bobs that uh, you hear people saying, add this to your shake, add that to your shake. For me, it's about food, always add food. So for me, it would be 50 grams of protein post-workout um, and then as, you know, maybe 50 to 100 grams of oats. You can blend all that up with some ice and it'll taste absolutely bloody lovely. Um, another question that we got right as it paused and the Wi-Fi kicked me off again was with regard high jumbles, was with regards to the uh, Body Coach 90 day plan. I didn't read the entire question. So whoever asked that question, do please ask it again. And of course, I will be sure to answer it. Stephanie Jane Lee, hello. Tower, hello, plenty of you coming in. I will try my best after this live feed is done to save this video onto YouTube. So if you're watching this on Catch Up TV right now, this was our live feed from what day are we today? It's Wednesday. I can't remember the date. My days are all kind of merging into one at the moment. Um, on Instagram, we're just coming here for a live Q&A and I'm going to answer any questions, get rid of any rumours, myths, bust anything that you need me to bust open and generally have a bit of chat and a good fun. Do I still recommend protein fat breakfast even in a muscle building phase or is it okay to include some carbs in your breakfast? Wacker, that depends on how lean you are. If you're really, really lean already, then I can say, yeah, have some carbs for breakfast. If you're not really, really lean, you're still not gonna use those carbs very well. And after all, the fatter you are, the poor, or the, the worse the hormonal environment you are in to build muscle. So I would still suggest a protein and fat breakfast because it sets you up in the right way on every single level, okay? You're not gonna overeat on crap, you're not gonna get cravings, um, you're going to get your neurotransmitter set up right, you're gonna get your digestive system moving correctly, and of course you're gonna start protein turnover um, and stop any catabolism. And whether you're trying to build muscle or you are trying to burn fat, your number one goal is always going to be to remain anabolic. Theoretically, so long as you are anabolic, and by that I mean a muscle building state, you are gonna be in a good place to burn fat, providing you're on a calorie deficit. Hi, Fraser here, RE body coach question. There we go, Fraser, thank you for coming back in. Um, do you have any thoughts on plans like that? Don't have any in info regarding calories. Now, Okay, so the body coach is one of those things. The body coach, uh, I'll let loose a bit here. The body coach has got so many things to be thankful, so many things to be uh, commended for. Um, I, he's got people off their ass. He's delivered fitness information and uh, an element of healthy eating to the masses in a way that they understand, in a way that they have responded to more important than anything. However, the guy, this is my opinion, not the opinion of UP. This is nothing to do with my performance, just me, Elliot Upton. He's never gonna win an award for coaching, you know? Some of the programs that he puts out are absolutely terrible. Um, and also, as much as it is a very, very accessible program to do, getting people to kind of nonchalantly do high intensity interval training on a hard living room floor or garden floor or whatever, every single day is just plain stupidity. The joint integrity, the issues with stress hormones, recovery, you name it, it's not that intelligent. With regards to the calories and food, I do think he's got a lot to be thanked for. And I, unfortunately, I think that so many people in the fitness industry, they hang themselves up on calories too much. Yes, of course calories matter, but the danger of getting into fitness and doing things in a certain way and calorie counting and macro tracking is that you just become obsessed with food. To a degree, the fitness industry has become another eating disorder, okay? So let's say you've got bulimia, anorexia, and you, you know, you, you're mentally strong enough to pull yourself out of that, you start eating, you start training, you start really changing and getting yourself in shape. You then tend to become, yeah, you're, you're not obsessed with food in the way you were before, but you then become obsessed with your macros and balancing this, that, and the other. And the same applies if you've been obese, you know? You're just eating too many food, that's an, too much food, that's an eating disorder. You then bring that down, okay? You bring that down to a point where you're tracking macros, you're tracking calories, it's just an eating disorder. And this is why there's so much anxiety and so many mental issues and borderline psychosis that occurs in the fitness industry. Um, so I don't necessarily think he's done any wrong with uh, the nutritional side of it. And he certainly has delivered it in a good way, an engaging way, and a fun way. Let me just switch my aircon on, otherwise I'm gonna roast. Keep asking questions, folks. I am, uh, I am still listening, rest assured. But now my aircon is on and fingers crossed it's going to blow right in my face so I don't start sweating. 
Gotta recommend a good healthy breakfast for a teenager. Arianator, there's literally no difference between a good healthy breakfast for a teenager or a good healthy breakfast for a, an adult. And um, protein and fat. So for me, the best choice is always gonna be something like meat and nuts, um, or f because it's more sort of palatable for most people, something like an omelet or salmon and scrambled eggs, things like that. All right, going through, going through, going through, going through. The worst thing has happened. When I carried all of my stuff through, I forgot my water, my BCA is my amplifier, so I may have to run off and get that in a moment because when I talk like this and the aircon's blowing in my face in this particular position, my throat dries out like you wouldn't believe. Bella Boopy, can you recommend where I can find one guy like you so handsome, please? Mm, unfortunately, people as handsome as me don't grow on trees. Um, I don't know. UP gyms, I guess, we're all handsome chaps, who knows, but thanks. Don't really know what to say to that, but thank you. Uh, Stephanie Jane Lee, I agree, 100%. The relationship with food is more important and often than the food itself, absolutely, 100%. But despite that, it's one of the things that is very, very, very often forgotten. Um, I've been chatting to uh, one of our lovely, lovely clients, an all round awesome girl, Kath Tilsley, recently. Um, and we talk about the, the emotional relationship with food, especially that women have, and the, the issues that women cause themselves by creating these very, very damaging emotional relationships and emotional reactions to food and body weight, etc. And it's one of the reasons in the Female Live UP program, the fat loss program that we do, the, the, it's basically three, four week fat loss programs tagged together, is I don't let the girls weigh themselves anymore. Um, because I don't, personally, I don't believe it's healthy unless you have that one-to-one -one trainer, someone who's guiding you every single moment of every single day to reassure you in those moments of that. So I don't believe weighing yourself as a female is necessarily that healthy um, because we don't address the anxiety and the emotional attachment to food in the fitness industry as much as we should. My wife is interested in live UP for women. Can you confirm the workout requirements uh, so I can let her know before signing up? Waka, uh, there are three gym-based workouts uh, per week. Um, and she will be expected to do other general activity, um, but that can be done outside or at home. Coming in, coming in, coming in. We're scooping down some questions here. Arianator, thanks. I always watch your live videos and they're very helpful. Thank you very much, Arianator. I love your name, um, and I'm glad that these can be of help to you. Andrea Edgar, if I'm running 15 miles plus a week, will I still build muscle? I've been told not to do much cardio. If you're genetically quite gifted, potentially yes, Andrea, and you would also be having to eat an awful lot of food and again, training to build muscle. Um, if, you, if those three variables are in your favor, then there is a mild possibility. However, the chances are probably not. Xavier Princess, hello. Uh, what exercise should I do to lose fat and build muscle? If you are asking me for just exercises. Ultimately, if you want to build muscle, you want to lose fat, especially nutrition. It's all about your diet. So exercise, some dietary restraint would be my, my perfect exercise. But if you could pick exercises to uh, build the most muscle and burn the most fat at the same time, it would always be kind of the big three, squats, deadlifts, pull-ups. Those would be the three that I went for. Okay, folks, hang fire right here. Entertain yourselves. I'm going to be literally probably 20 seconds while I go and get my drink, but I don't want to pause the live feed. So, you know, take a look at my crib. The magic happens over there. Entertain yourselves. I'll be back. Don't worry, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm back. It's fine. Just had to get my drink. Okay, did you all panic then? I bet you did. I do weights, yoga, and I'm 8.5 stone. Um, 8.5 stone, good God. That's quite light, isn't it? If I farted, you'd probably fall over. Um, that's good, loves fashion. What is the most effective core workout plan, weights or cardio or combination? Core workout plan, um, weights are always gonna be your most effective avenue to any goal, really. Um, they're gonna help get you strong, they're gonna help get you lean, and they're gonna to help to tone up and tighten your body. Misha, booty fit, Kieran's, planks and Prosecco. What's one of the funniest things about going on uh, Instagram live chats is some of the names that you lot come up with. Brilliant. I am in. Right. So, one of the other things that a lot of you are asking is what is the best? What is the best exercise? What is the best program? What is the best diet? What is the best macro split? What is the best this? And for anyone who has watched me do these for the last, what have we done now? Nearly five months, four months, five months. There is no best. 
There is no best. Every single one of you is very, very different. Every single one of you will react very differently to the same thing. You have different training intensities. You have different genetic abilities. You have different recovery factors. So it's really, really important that you understand there is no best way for everybody. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to pick a, an approach and use it as a baseline to say, right, this is what I'm trying, but I'm gonna work either side of that, okay? That gives you a measure. It gives you something sort of tangible to work from. But there is no best way because everyone is different. The sooner you guys understand that, the sooner you're going to make progress because you won't be constantly looking for the magic pill and thinking, oh, I tried this, this isn't it. Oh, I tried that, that's not it. Oh, maybe it's this. No, it's not that either. There is no best way. There is a way for you, absolutely, but it may take some trial and error, so I understand that. Pick whatever way you happen to have stumbled upon or whatever you happen to have researched, then use that as a baseline to make changes from. What's in the drink? In that drink is a bit of Amplifier BCAA because I'm absolutely starving and uh, I wanted that instead of eating food that is not what I should be doing now because I've already eaten loads of food today. Some days, when I get up really, 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 really early, I eat, just constantly eat. I just need to eat, 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 eat. Um, so that kind of kills my appetite. But I only have BCAAs outside of training if I'm starving and it's between that and going and eating cake or something. Ari Nata, you're still working with Gemma Atkinson because she's my favorite actor. I've seen a photo of her in her gyms. You, you've been tagged in the post. Yes, Ari Nata, she's, uh, she's in and out of our Manchester gym quite a lot. So yeah, we are still working with her. Elaine, makeup artist, what's up? Tall Danny, I'm now 12% body fat. Tip to get uh, mate, mate lean. Uh, if you're 12% body fat now, Tall Danny, carb cycling, aggressive carb cycling. For anyone who's listening onto this and doesn't already know what carb cycling is, that is fluctuations in your daily carb intake based on your training volume or activity level. To put that simply, when you're doing big training sessions such as legs, you need more fuel. So you take in loads and loads of carbs on those days, but when you're doing a smaller training session like arms or you're not training at all or it's a cardio day, you take your carbs right out. Simples. Planks and Prosecco, optimum sessions per week. Right, so what you've just done there, Planks and Prosecco, is you've taken my entire monologue about there is no best, taken the word best out and put optimum in. Thanks for that. Dependent on your recovery, dependent on your genetics, dependent on your training intensity, dependent on your experience, that is going to change. That is always going to change. So let's say generalized, generalized, grossly, for most people, three to four days a week maximum is enough to change, but also recover adequately and still have a life to a degree that they won't start to resent their training and dieting, okay? Loves fashion, what should you eat after a workout, please? The first thing you wanna be doing after a workout, loves fashion, uh, is taking a shake, something like our pea protein, which you can get off upfitness.com if you go to the store. And um, so you want a shake, a protein shake, because that is very, very rapidly absorbed. And what that does is it kickstarts the recovery process and it stops your muscles from eating themselves. Therefore, you're gonna be fitter, healthier, you're gonna get stronger, quicker. And uh, secondly, have a meal that is rich in carbohydrates. So, you know, after your workout, you could have some rice, uh, potato, sweet potato, anything like that. So basically your priorities are number one, have a shake first thing, right? After you work out, you know, within 10, 15 minutes to get that kick started. Then within an hour, hour and a half, you have a proper meal with some more protein, you know, that could be eggs, it could be chicken, it could be fish, whatever, and some carbs. So a carb of your choice. Wacker, why do you currently use pea protein instead of whey? Is it just for a change and mix up of protein sources? Uh, me personally, because I went through a stage, you know, bear in mind I've been drinking whey shakes every single day at least once for the last 14 years, nearly 15 years. Um, and over the last couple of years, more so when I came out to Spain because there's a lot of irritants in the air and this place tends to play with your allergies a lot. Now I don't have any allergies, but when I came out here I started to get gut irritation. Um, and one of the things I found was irritating my gut regularly was uh, whey protein. So I switched to our UPP protein and I don't have any issues anymore. Do you count calorie deficit daily or by the week? Kieran Zabad, for the sake of sanity, I would suggest doing it weekly. Um, but again, depends on a client as to whether I do that. But for the sake of sanity and longevity, if you're going to count calories, do it weekly. 
Welsh Chrissy. I want to join one of the UP, UP gyms, but I live in Wales. Um, we do have online training, remember Chrissy? So if you want uh, coaching from a UP trainer, you can go to upfitness.com and you can either do one-to-one -one online coaching where you would end up with a trainer like me barking at you every single day, telling you exactly what you need to eat, drink, sleep, blah, 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 blah. Or you can do the live UP programs, which are uh, ready-made uh, fat loss programs, uh, which are all monitored by an online forum. So you do have options, even if you're not near a UP gym, you do have options. Just go to upfitness.com, go to the online training section, it will show you everything we can do. Confused Rick, TDE is 2,600 calories. Is 1,600 calories too low? The goal is fat loss. Potentially, but to go down there isn't necessarily a bad thing. To go down there long term may be a bad thing. Now to put that in perspective, when, I, when we all talk about, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big advocate of talk, saying formulas are kind of bullshit. Um, yeah, it's great to have these formulas to work out a number to start with. You then assess the results from that number and you move, the, move either side of it. Now, for instance, I'm 100 kilos, okay? My body weight is 100 kilos. I may not look it, but I'm 100 kilos. Now, I do not start losing fat now until I'm about... 14 to 1600 calories, then I start losing fat. And I don't feel too bad for it. Yeah, I'm starving hungry, but my energy's all right, my brain's relatively clear, so it's all good. The only difference being, if you are going down that low as a male, um, or even as a female, is you don't want to start go down there too long. You need to regularly come back out, otherwise your thyroid's gonna slow and it's gonna cause you a whole host of other problems. But formulas and TDE is great and all, but everybody's different. Every body is different, every human is different, every level of genetics is different, so you have to find where you adapt and then be intelligent about how you adapt. Arinator, bye, thanks for coming up. MJ Rich, what's up, homeboy as well. Tall Danny, no problem. I go to gym four times a week now, weights and cardio, uh, but more weights, but I get smaller, I still feel like I need to lose fat. I don't tone up much, look really great in clothes, but not bikini ready. Um, then check your diet, Elaine, check your diet. Remember, when, especially when it comes to, well, do you know, I was gonna say fat loss, but any goal, your diet is key. You know, if you're training to lose fat, but your diet is geared to lose, or to gain muscle, you're gonna gain muscle, okay? It's that simple. Whereas if you are, let's say you're training to lose size, i.e. muscular size, but your diet is not adequate to lose muscular size, you know, maybe you're eating too much protein, whatever, you won't. Your diet is kind of the key to everything here. Do you mean no carbs at all, uh, no training days? Not necessarily no carbs, Andrea, just lower carbs. Not necessarily no, there's a difference. So as I jump the gun, or Irish planks? The answer is it always depends, 100% Christian, it definitely is, it very much depends. Don't get me wrong, listen, when you guys ask these questions about formulas and what's the best way and this, that and the other, I remember way back in the day, we're going back six or seven years in UP now, uh, when I started, and obviously I would imagine years before that, we used to, kind of the original, I'm not even part of the original 20, but let's say the original 40 or 50 trainers that uh, Nick ever had. We used to give him the biggest nightmares. Every single Tuesday, 1 p.m. or 2 p.m. in a team meeting, we'd be like, yeah, but Nick, no, there must be a formula. There must be a formula. Like, how are you so good at it? And we're, we're still learning. How can we do what you do all the time? We're like, what's the formula? What's the secret? Why aren't you telling us? And it took me a couple of years to click because he always used to just say, look, there isn't one. There isn't one. There isn't this. There isn't that. Because obviously we were all like books, 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 study, 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 study. The truth was there wasn't a best way. Experience taught you, you know, one of the lucky things that the juniors have really in UP now, and um, everyone who comes into UP comes in as a junior, but they have the wealth of experience of you know, like a century, well over a couple of centuries worth of combined experience to learn from and that has built the systems that they now learn from. So the sooner, certainly for any trainers out there or anyone who's just a very, very keen exerciser and wants to learn about this stuff, the sooner you can let go of those super fine details, the quicker your results are gonna come because they're holding you back. I actually put a post up yesterday and uh, one of the things was the un un unseen things that hold you back from your success. This can be in anything else, but certainly with fitness, dieting, etc. is the thing that holds you back the most quite often is the thing you think you know, okay? Or the thing you have been conditioned to believe previously. 
You can't fill a cup that's already full. So if you come at me and ask for my help, but you think you know better, so you start to do things differently, and then think, oh, I haven't got results. Yes, because you didn't bloody listen. Your cup was already full and the information I tried to pour into it, you just spilled all over the table and let go of. So let go of what you think you already know um, and understand that there isn't a best way to do everything or anything. Um, I'm two months before going to Ibiza to be in the best shape. Should I bulk for a month and cut for a month or something different? Uh, Tom, <laughs> cut. You ain't doing shit in a month. You are not bulking anything in a month. Yeah, you'll get fatter in a month, but you're not holding on any muscle if you try to diet down. Whereas if you diet down, give yourself eight weeks, yes, it's not long, but you can diet down in eight weeks and still put on muscle. Whereas if you try to quote unquote bulk up, you'll get fat in a month, you're not gaining any muscle, but then you'll have only a month to diet back down, so you'll probably lose more muscle than you would have in the first place. So, cut. I'm a 5'10 male, currently at 242 pounds. How much fat weight do you think I can lose by year end? Keep up the great work. Thought we'd talk for six. You shouldn't really be looking at weight. Again, this is another one of those it depends questions. Everybody's very, very different, so there is no hard and fast answer as to how much weight you can lose. I wouldn't hold on to your weight anyway, but let's say if you are losing at 242 pounds, you're not vastly heavy, but let's say if you can lose a half a kilo a week, that would be bang on. If you were my client and you were losing a half a kilo of fat a week, this is not half a kilo of body weight, if you were losing a half a kilo of fat a week, I would be happy with you. Body weight is a very different thing, that's why I say discount it. If you're losing a half a kilo of fat every single week, you'd be bang on target. If you can do more than that, then great, but largely that will come down to your genetics, training intensity, etc. What are net carbs? I was looking at Quest bars and noticed the advertiser only five grams of net carbs, but back of the pack it says 24. So basically what net carbs, the Atkins diet started all of this. Net carbs are basically the total carb content minus the fiber content. So that leaves you with your net carbs. Now the theory is that um, the net carbs are the only ones that you're going to actually absorb. That's the theory behind it. But again, don't get hung up on stuff like that. Um, just again, with stuff like Quest bars, Again, this is Elliot talking, not UP. Eat foods, not products. This includes protein bars. Now, as I say, body power is about to start, where all of these fitness models who don't get paid to fitness model, they all still work in call centers, turn up, take their clothes off, and hand out free supplements to a bunch of people who can't afford their own. Now, this whole industry, this, this, this protein bars and this and that and the other, it's misleading you lot because you then turn around and you say, oh, well, I'm going to have a Quest bar because it's better than a Mars bar. Is it? It's got more protein than a Mars bar. Yeah, absolutely. But it's probably also got more calories than a Mars bar. And what tends to happen? As soon as a human being says, I think this is healthy, this human being turns around and says, well, it's healthy so I can have more of them. Because I wouldn't say go and eat two Mars bars a day. You know if I said that to you on a diet, you'd think, you're having a laugh, Elliot. But... For some reason, people think it's okay to eat two Quest bars or two grenade bars or two these bars. These are products, they've been processed, they've had all sorts of stuff put in them to stick them together. It is not as simple as protein content that a lot of people think, or, you know, this is healthy, this is marketed, this. If somebody turned around to you next week, gave you a Mars bar, but marketed it to make you think it's healthy, you would eat it. Unfortunately, the issue with uh, a person, a person in isolation, it's very, very intelligent, but a population, the masses are dumb as shit, and we will buy into anything. The same applies to protein bars, stuff like that. So this is net carbs, I've elaborated on this a bit, but if you genuinely want to get lean, I wouldn't be shoving protein bars down your throat. Use the calories for real food, it's gonna do you real good. I go to the gym in the morning, I don't eat before, and I just have a, a protein shake and a banana when I come out, 10, 30, 11, it's breakfast, is that enough? I, w I would always recommend not weight training on an uh, empty stomach, Sam. I've got absolutely no, no issue with uh, fasted cardio, I don't mind it at all, in fact, I think it's really, really useful. Loads of people will disagree with me on that, I know, but fasted cardio with branched chain amino acids, you drink some before and you also take in a load during, Okay, you make sure you do that, so it's not truly fasted, but that is very, very useful. However, weight training, fasted, do not do it. Well, it's Chrissy, it's brilliant to know, I'll look into that, awesome. My 16 year old wants to build some size, what are the best foods to eat? Clean foods, 
Um, if you genuinely, he or she genuinely wants to uh, gain some muscle, then make sure they're eating really, really well. Plenty of vegetables, plenty of protein. You know, let's say three to four meals a day. Make sure there's a solid serving of protein on there, at least a half a plate of vegetables, and the rest of the mix of carbs and fats. I heard you say walking will be better than fat loss. Uh, what's the reason for that? So, first of all, um, you know, whether you believe it or not, I do seem to, I, I find that the training zone theory seems to be quite uh, accurate based on results, right? So I get my clients to do a really, really fast walk. So I'm like, right, get up in the morning, don't jog, but walk as quickly as you can for, you know, however long the distance may be that I've prescribed. Now, if you are running, the risk versus reward, you know, let's say it takes you out of your cardio zone and takes, or sorry, takes you out of your fat burning zone and into your cardio zone where you're not oxidizing so much fat. That's one factor. Secondly, the risk versus reward. If you are consistently running, the impact on your joints, the elevated stress hormones, the uh, potential to turn uh, fast twitch fibers into slow twitch fibers, all of these are negative when it comes to your fat loss and it comes to improving your body shape long term. Um, so, Risk versus reward. What are you getting out of running that you are not getting out of walking fast? Okay, there is no contest there for me, absolutely none. That's going six times a week as well. Sam, you need to you need to slow your ass down. Go three times a week and try to eat before you go. When people talk low carb or high carb, how many is considered low or high? Roughly, I know everyone's different. Exactly, Miss KP, everyone's different. What is high carb for you would possibly be low carb for a male. What's high carb for me would be low carb for Nick, let's say. You know, he's 30, 25 kilos heavier than me. There is no, no, real, no real thing. I would, I would suggest low to moderate carbs for both male and female is about 100 grams of carbs a day. Cam, if you do a cut and start off steeply 500 calories each day, should you cycle, so have some days maintenance and reduce the deficit to 300 calories? Potentially, yeah, Cam, it's a good idea. Calorie cycling can be really, really useful, but it will also uh, potentially accelerate your fat loss, not just preserve muscle, but it will potentially accelerate your fat loss, because it's, especially if it's coming from carbs, because it's likely to stave off that issue with your thyroid starting to slow down. Should you use pre-bio feeder with your estro support um, how does it work if you need to take the contraceptive pill? Is the estro support still worth taking and will it help shed fat? Yes, Fran Rowe, because the contraceptive pill plays havoc with your hormones, but it's not um, not in the same way that estro support is designed to help. Estro support is designed to help reduce uh, the conversion of estro estrogens into uh, 16 hydro hydroxy estrogens, and it's also designed to help uh, detox the body of harmful est estrogens. There are three types in the body. One is protective, two are harmful. Estro support tries to remove the two that are harmful. What the uh, combination contraceptive pill does is put in synthetic estrogen to fool your ovaries into thinking uh, that things are balanced at certain times of month and etc, etc, etc. So yes, it is still worth taking. All right, we've come to the end of the questions. I'm going to have a drink and chill out a little while. So who's coming at me next? For those of you who don't know what estro support is, um, estrogens, xenoestrogens are something that affect all of us, whether you're male or female, whether you believe it or not, they are, we're all being attacked by them, okay? It's in the air that we breathe, it's in the food that we eat, even if you try to eat organic, nothing is truly organic these days. It's in the water that we drink out of the tap, it's in the water that we shower in and we absorb through our skin and hair. Little known fact for you girls who put loads of crap on your hair is that your hair will absorb anything five times faster than any other tissue in your body. So if you're not using the right products on your hair, you're causing yourself unbelievable amounts of problems, okay? Even plastic water bottles, never ever reuse a plastic water bottle because you're gonna to start to absorb the, uh, the xenoestrogens from them. Now, what are the signs and symptoms of estrogen dominance? Mood swings, irritability, low sex drive, reproductive problems, fertility problems. In men, your boners are gonna be soft, you're gonna have no sex drive, you're not gonna be able to build muscle, you're probably gonna have bitch tits and love handles. Women potentially are gonna store fat around your bum and your thighs. These are all potential signs of estrogen dominance. And our estro support sup, go to upfitness.com, go to the store. Our estro support sup helps your body to deal with them. It helps pull them out of the tissues and it helps to get rid of them. It helps support detoxification. Obviously, you still need a decent amount of protein in your diet to help support that detoxification. And you need loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of water, and that will get rid of it too. 
DMC, what is my current training split? Thanks for all the info. My current training split, uh, I train uh, upper body twice a week, lower body twice a week on alternating days. So for instance, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday, and then alternate like that, and I will do upper body, lower body, upper body, lower body. <clears throat> I have BCA in tablet form, say six a day. I've been taking two, three times a day before a workout, after workout, and then the evening. Is this right? Um, it's not right, and it's not wrong. I suggest taking powdered BCAAs during any working out or cardio sessions. So whether that's intervals, whether that is steady state cardio, or that is your weight training sessions, I would suggest for most females, five to 10 grams equivalent of protein, you should be taking in BCAAs. For males, 15 to 20 during exercise. Uh, relating to this, after an aggressive deficit for one week at 500, then the second week at three, and during each week have one day maintenance, would that increase fat loss and preserve muscle? Potentially, yes, Cam. Um, the key to all of this stuff is to try it, see what happens. You know, everything works in theory, but not much works in practice. So try it, see what happens, record it, you know, <coughs> and compare it to what you've done in the past. But certainly the theory behind that is sound. First time I've listened to this, very interesting and good to know. We'll let my UP patients uh, no, and get them to do the same. Awesome, thank you Lee, thanks for dropping by. Harvinder, what's best for fat loss? What's what best for fat loss? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll humour that with an answer anyway and say exercising, dietary restraint, and exercising. Cherry tea, in terms of losing fat and cutting, what is the best food for me to be eating daily? What should I be eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner? If, again, not an ideal question because it's way too broad, but I'm gonna humor it with an answer anyway and say what should you be eating at every single meal? At the very least, a protein, a good clean protein source. In your experience, do the changing hormonal levels in perimenopause of women have an effect on energy levels? Absolutely, 100%. And any physiological effect on the body, it's detrimental to training. D goddess. So uh, during uh, certainly perimenopausal, what's happening with your body is you are having days when your ovaries are producing tons and tons and tons and tons of estrogen, and other days where they kind of sh pack up their balls and leave, and they say, no, nah, not going to do it today. Now, the result of that is uh, massively fluctuating uh, moods, anxiety, social ability, mental clarity, all of these are the effects of high estrogens. I mentioned estro support stops earlier. This is what that tries to prevent, okay? It aids the body's ability to prevent that. Now, when estrogen is high, these are all the things you are gonna be feeling. Not only that, but you're also gonna be carrying tons and tons of water very, very often. Your motivation is gonna be low. Your feelings of well-being are gonna be low. All of these things exacerbate um, exacerbate your issues with exercising, especially being consistent on any kind of diet. Not only that, but again, we look at estrogen levels that are uh, consistently high, they can negatively affect your thyroid, okay? Therefore, slowing down your metabolism. Menopause is certainly not impossible to lose body fat on, um, but you just have to be a little bit more, uh, first and foremost, you have to be more educated on it. And I think certainly with a lot of women, again, something I've discussed with Kath recently, is that I think a lot of women have literally no idea, no idea what goes on in their body during their period and during menopause and potentially even during pregnancy. And this is a real problem because the better understanding you have of stuff like this, the better you can deal with it, the better you can remedy it, the better the people around you can help you with it. You know, men, we don't understand the period, we don't understand all these things. You know, I try to advocate to a lot of men who ask me, and even in our own trainers who talk about, you know, the, the online trainers that I see when we talk about females and potentially reading between the lines and some reactions to their programs is that you have to understand that all of these issues that people go through at menopause and during their menstrual cycle are very real very very real and for some women they can be relentless for others they don't even know they're there so you know everybody is very very different but yes it can actually it can absolutely have an effect on your training on motivation on your recovery um, on your willingness to do anything on your mental focus so yeah understand that it is there take it seriously but it's something that you know you can help with the right decisions the right education <clears throat> what do you think about the trend that seems to be doing the rounds with well-known trainers of not lifting weights heavy and three pounds for females look of really Alisa unfortunately this has been going on for years years and years and years and years the Tracy Anderson school of I'm a dumbass um, it's absolutely rubbish unfortunately I would hope, I would hope that anyone who follows us, of course, that's not everyone in the world, you know, there's still another 7.4 billion people who I would love to follow us. But I would hope anyone who does follow us understands how big a load of rubbish that is. 
And to look at a trainer like that and to look at someone who is advocating that and understand just how clueless they are. Okay, because that's the only word for it, it's clueless. Um, that's my thoughts on it, I'll keep it pleasant. But I have 180 tablets to use up, what would you recommend until I finish them and get powder? Exactly what you're doing, madam, it really doesn't matter. You'll be fine, don't stress it. Don't stress to all of you folks out there. This comes, it always happens with supplements and it happens with a lot of kind of like science geeky trainers, blah, 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 blah. Stop stressing the little things when a lot of you really struggle to get the basics right, okay? Focus, 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 focus on your nutrition. Get that right. If I take you on as a client and you turn around and say, oh yeah, I did eight out of 10 this week, you know, I did eight out of 10, I did pretty well. What supplements can I take? Can you give me six supplements to help me do this? And I say, no, I can't give you six supplements. I'm not gonna waste your money, I'm not gonna waste my time. Get the other two points right. I don't need you to be perfect, but some people need to let go of the finer details and just focus on the basics until they become a habit. It sounds harsh, it sounds like I'm being a bit mean, but trust me, if you want results and you want sustainability, it's super, super important. Thoughts on prolonged fasting, don't do it. Uh, sorry, I know I asked this before, but you didn't answer because I wasn't aware it was a female Q&A. Yeah, don't do it, um, especially on a quick female Q&A. <laughs> sorry, for a female. The only, only time ever, yeah, of course, as with everything in the fitness industry, there are going to be, there is going to be evidence to suggest whatever you want to suggest, okay? There is a way of finding out what you want to know and confirming it. That's just life, okay? The reality of it is, fasting, yes, it can absolutely be beneficial for health reasons, many, many health reasons. I will never ever deny that, it has its place. But ultimately, what people come to us for is to get in shape, is for fat loss, is for muscle building and health. Now, unless, unless you have tons of muscle, tons of muscle that you're willing to lose, I don't believe fasting is necessarily the best thing for you. And I certainly, as I say, I'm 100 kilos, I'm carrying enough muscle, but I'm not carrying a vast amount. I can't fast because I lose insane amounts of muscle very, very quickly. Thank you, don't worry, I use my brain in time to tra online training with Emily at UP. Good brain, good brain. Is it worth booking 12 session package with UP and will I see any results of weight loss or better to book more sessions? So it's worth booking any sessions, whether it's 12 or more, but what you need to understand is that it's always about a long-term commitment. Nothing happens overnight and, and it takes a while to get into things. Unless you're incredibly driven, incredibly focused, and the timing is right for you perfectly to change, it's important to understand that it's a long-term commitment. My advice, of course, would always be to go for a bigger package because you don't want to try and rush these things. The harder you try to go at it initially because you feel like, all right, I'm on a time scale. Yes, there's a strength to that because you have a goal, you have an immediate goal and you're driven to go and get it. But there is also a risk to that in that that intensity can knock you off track. Okay, so it's very much dependent on you. My advice, personally, I would try to go for a longer term. Like, if ever I do online coaching with someone, um, I don't even look at the shorter terms. I'm like, right, if I'm gonna commit to this, I'm gonna commit to a year, and I go in and I say, well, what's the longest package you can give me as a coach? Um, and then I go for that. Luca, hello again. How many online clients does UP trainer take on at any time? Um, it depends on how many they can service. So we try not to let UP trainers take on too many. The reason being is that we want to make sure every single client they have is getting the absolute optimal service. Now, online training can be very, very challenging for many, many reasons, you know. Clients can be unresponsive, clients don't check their emails, clients don't respond, clients don't fill in their data. The difference between walking into a gym, like you walk into the gym and see me and we're training three days a week, whatever. And I say, right, I need you to fill these bits in, blah, 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 blah. You walk into me and you say, oh, I forgot to fill it in. Me personally, I'll tell you to get the fuck out of my gym until you have, you're willing to put the effort in, the effort that I'm willing to give to you, I expect back 100%. So one-to-one -one training tends to be a little bit easier for that. Now, what happens with online is sometimes it can take a little bit more chasing, it can take a little bit more time. So we tend to limit the amount of clients that an online trainer can take to how they can service a client. We want to make sure that everybody who is training with us gets an absolute 100% first class service. If they don't, we try to figure out why and we develop it. But this does mean that our trainers can't take on too many at a time. Two peas in the blonde, yo. What do you think are the best certifications for a trainer to learn nutrition and training? I would love to have the knowledge uh, UP Train has. A BSR for me, your best bet is, this is not necessarily courses, of course, find out whatever makes you tick. Find out what appeals to you, find out what you enjoy, find out what you think you're gonna really apply yourself to, that is the key. 
Because if you try to do a bunch of courses because you think you have to, you're going to be bored shitless and you're not going to learn anything. However, if you find the stuff that really makes you, you know, excites you, you're going to love it. You're going to become a master at it, and that is key. Don't try and be a, you know, don't try and be a student of everything until you've become a master of one thing. Now, with that in mind, the best course that I've ever found is Precision Nutrition. I was one of the first people ever, I think, to do one of the Precision Nutrition courses back in the day, and I love them. I think they're a great company. John Barad is a genius. His team are really, really good. I very, very highly rate them, so that will be uh, one of the areas I suggest you go down uh, first when it comes to the nutrition point of view. Secondly, you know, it's not going to cost you any money. Read everything, watch everything, everybody's video, ask questions, find a mentor, find people that inspire you. You know, find people that you question and you think you're a dumbass. The reason being, it's important to listen to absolutely everything. Whether you think someone's a dumbass or not, listen to what they have to say. Make sense of it. Figure out your rationale of it and then figure out how to apply it to the real world. I do have, you know, I do think certainly in this day and age, when everyone's trying to make a statement, everyone's trying to be different, everyone's trying to be, you know, I'm a coach, not a trainer, I'm, uh, shut up, you know? The gap between a textbook and the real world is massive. It's massive. And I think so many trainers are forgetting that these days. So my advice to you would be to read as much as possible, speak to as many people as possible, question absolutely everything. Question everything, try to pick holes in it. Once you're confident that you've got the grasp of something, try to apply it, make sure you apply it to the real world, don't just take it on face value, that's where you're gonna learn the most. Uh, listen to Elliot when he says, have focus on supplements after you've changed your habits and the food sources. Yeah, thanks Steph. Supplements aren't gonna change your body, exactly. What's one food you say is a must to include in your diet? Green vegetables, which is pretty much the one that most people miss. Obviously, it's very, very obvious for anyone trying to get in shape that protein is key, okay? Having a high protein intake, moderate to high protein intake is vital for everyone, whether male or female, you have to have it. You have to take it in, okay? So that is number one. But what is the thing that I would suggest is most important, and I bring it up because nobody does it right, is greens. Greens, green vegetables, greens that are green outside and green inside, okay? So you're not just gonna chuck a couple of cucumbers down your gob every single day. Useful greens, leafy greens, dark leafy greens, cruciferous vegetables. You should be eating, each one of you out there, depending on your size, depending on your goal, should be eating between three and five meals per day, let's say, as a general rule. I'm talking dinner plates, okay? Now, with that, half of that plate, half of that plate stacked should be green vegetables. This is where so many people go wrong when they're trying to get in shape because they're not eating enough veg. Booty fit, I love PM. We went out to meet him and attended one of their potluck uh, meaning there's such a blast. Yeah, he's a great guy, John Barardi and the team. You know, I, I've, I massively rate the whole business. I've got so much time for them. And you know, back as a young PT, back when I was in my early 20s, I learned a lot from, from their content. Um, I've hit a plateau, not seeing any results or changes. Would you suggest changing diet or training or both? Lauren, change one thing at a time. Whenever you hit a plateau, change one thing at a time because if you change too many things, you're not gonna know which one worked. Ramadan, around the corner. How do I train for fat loss during this month? Uh, Umain, if you go to our uh, website, upfitness.com, search Ramadan, and I believe there are a couple of articles outlining exactly what you wanna be doing uh, throughout that period. Uh, so we've got your back there. Go over to upfitness.com, go into the search bar, which I believe is on the top right, of the page and then search Ramadan and it will come up with the content that we've put up there before. Uh, you mentioned the previous post about avoiding dairy, but isn't calcium important, especially post-menopause? <laughs> Potentially, yes, but, excuse me. One of the issues at menopause is that you stop, uh, you stop absorbing calcium. So yes, it is, that's why it becomes important, right? But. One of the issues with estrogen is it can stop the absorptions of calcium by taking in uh, dairy. That's probably the most estrogen rich uh, food you're ever gonna take in, okay? So I would suggest taking it out and supplementing with calcium as opposed to taking in dairy. Um, so lesser of two evils. What do you think about omega-3 supplements? Is omega-3 and omega-6 ratio important? Uh, I do believe it is important, yes. If you can get uh, the right balanced supplement, do I think necessarily, again, it comes back to this thing with supplements, should people be paying so much attention to supplements when they can't even get their diets right? No. Um, Omega-3s, absolutely. I get all of my clients 
to take uh, omega-3s every single day, about five to 10 grams, dependent on the client, um, dependent on inflammation factors, things like that. Um, omega-3s is absolutely important, and their ratio is important, but again, focus on the basics before you start focusing on the specifics. Can your online training personal help as if your goal was to build lagging body parts? Of course, uh, Dwan Declan. Uh, yeah, you've got to bear in mind that we have, how many? I'm gonna say probably at least 10 to 15 title holding bodybuilders uh, within the UP staff. So obviously their, their art, their science and art is to bring up lagging body parts, okay, to balance the physique. So yes, we do have that. One of the uh, uh, better ones we have, better bodybuilders we have, uh, it's a guy called Matt Earls. If you go over to Matt Earls' uh, Instagram page, one of our UP trainers in Mayfair, you'll see him. Wicked, wicked, wicked physique. He knows exactly what he's doing when it comes to bodybuilding. So, of course, we can help you out. Would I restrict fruit? I don't restrict fruit, no. Um, on the fat loss plans, such as Live UP, um, I, it's not even an option. I tell my uh, male and female clients to have two pieces of fruit a day or two handfuls of fruit a day. What I don't allow is you to eat unlimited fruit, okay? Fructose and glucose, they act in a very, very different way. And so that is the natural sugars that people think are healthy versus sugars from carbohydrates. They act in a very, very different way. And if you are overeating on fruit, although it's healthy and it's full of nutrients, it's full of a lot of good things, yes, it potentially can be stored as fat after a certain point. If you're in a calorie surplus and you're eating too much fruit, it can potentially be stored as fat when liver stores hit a peak. Okay, so it's not necessarily optimal, but I do make my clients eat at least two pieces or two handfuls of fruit every single day. What foods should you eat to help lose weight? Number one priority should be protein, okay? Having protein with every meal, that will be between three to five meals per day, depending on whether you're male, female, your size, um, and green vegetables, green, green, green vegetables, lots and lots of green vegetables. Those would be the two keys to losing body fat quickly and sustainably. What foods would you suggest to help with acid reflux except water? Nothing as too acidic, basically, nothing too sharp, nothing too, uh, nothing too spicy will be the one. Again, probably things like dairy you're going to maybe want to stay away from and make sure you sleep on your left hand side. That can also help. Dark chocolate is supposed to be good. It only seems to come in giant bars. What is the correct quantity? Christine, I give dark chocolate to all of my female clients, everyone on the live UP programs, the fat loss programs. I make sure during my clients' periods, that kind of week, I give them 30 grams of dark chocolate per night, okay? Because it has a high magnesium content, it helps to soothe them, it's gonna help. Plenty of vitamins and minerals, it's got a bit of iron in it to help uh, replenish stuff that is needed. And it gives them that kind of little, little sweet thing to help bring a bit of happiness back into their life. So I'd suggest um, if you're having it for that purpose and you feel like you need dark chocolate over your period, then I would suggest about 30 grams a night is enough. If you're just asking me, can I eat chocolate every single night? If so, how much? I'm gonna say, no, you shouldn't be eating chocolate. Every night, stop trying it on. Would I have almond milk over cow's milk? Yeah, for me, I have uh, almond milk, coconut milk, or rice milk. Um, those are the three I prefer. Again, stay away from soy, soy products, anything like that. They are uh, full of natural phytoestrogens, which uh, can cause you problems with your thyroid. They can cause you problems with fat loss. They can cause problems with your fertility. So stay away from soy products, but stick to coconut, uh, stick to oats, stick to rice, something like that. Be fine. Almond milk as well. Uh, does magnesium help with cramp? Yes, it does. Magnesium stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, so it helps to calm muscles uh, and the body in general down. So if you're suffering with cramps, it could potentially mean that you're magnesium deficient, so yes, absolutely take some. Uh, how much? I would suggest for most females, between, let's say, 250 milligrams per day taken at night before you go to bed. If you have acute muscle cramps, which you're getting again and again and again, then have uh, a magnesium cream, rub that on the affected area and that will help to calm it down. Guys, I would suggest anywhere between 250 and 400 milligrams per night taken before bed. I'm doing group training and finding the diet really hard. I want, they want me to eat steak for breakfast and no fruit, no nothing. Really, only veg, chicken, fish, steak, and nuts. It's getting sickening. Um, so, Donna, speak to your trainer. Speak to your trainer and let them know, look, that I can't do this, and they will find a way to balance things out. My advice for you would be to, you know, you can swap out potentially uh, your morning steak 
for an omelet. That's what I like to do. It's what I offer my clients to do. Um, fats, make sure you're varying your fat uh, intake. So have avocado, have some nuts, have some nut butter, uh, make olive oil dressings for your greens, things like that. What you've got to remember, Don, is that for success when you are doing any kind of personal training, any kind of exercise, success is absolutely 100% reliant on your communication with your trainer, okay? You have to be completely open and honest with whatever you're feeling. Then that's the only way they can make changes. If they don't know exactly what is going on in detail, they cannot make changes. It becomes impossible. Tim Wright, should you train when you have a cold or chest infection? If it's a full-on chest infection, I would say probably not. Take a bit of a chill and, you know, go out for a walk, get some fresh air. Bacteria likes uh, kind of dark, damp places, so it likes to be inside. If you've got a cold or an infection, go out for a walk rather than going to the gym. What you've got to remember is that training elevates stress, okay? That's why we do it, because it stresses the body. The body adapts to come back better and stronger. But when, you are, uh, when you're sick, that is also a stress. It is a stressor on the body. Your body needs more calories. It needs various substrates to make you well again. Okay, so by training on top of that, if you are legitimately ill, then it's gonna slow down your recovery. You know, you kind of get a double-ended uh, double ended issue there. Um, if, however, it's just a sniffly little cold, then I'd probably say grow a pair and go to the gym. What do you recommend for a quick breakfast? For me, uh, as I've said a few times, omelette's a great quick breakfast for me, or I do what I've done tonight, and I just double up on my dinner. So uh, I've made red meat tonight for my dinner, 400 grams of red meat, I'll have 200 grams of that for breakfast first thing in the morning. And um, that's minced red meat because I just find it easier, for me I find it easier to stomach something like a bolognese or a chili style uh, red meat first thing in the morning as opposed to steak. Why when I put in 100% weight training sessions with my PT, do I rarely suffer DOMS, not that I want to feel it? Uh, Madam, I'm pretty sure you asked this question last week, didn't you? And I answered it exactly the same then. Um, I might be wrong, but hey. Uh, DOMS is not, for all of you out there looking onto this, DOMS is not a sign of a good workout. It isn't a sign of a good workout at all. All DOMS is, is a sign that you've damaged muscle to a certain degree. Just because you don't feel it does not mean you didn't have a good workout. Simple as that. Don't let that get to you. Um, and if you eat good quality food, do you need to take some multivitamins? Potentially, yes, Armand. I mean, unless you're, you know, you're living in deepest Siberia or somewhere that is largely untouched by uh, chemicals, this, that, and the other, the chances are, even if you're eating really, really, really good food, it is still deficient in minerals. The reason it is deficient in minerals is because the soil that it was grown in was deficient in minimal, minerals. So yes, it has survived, yes, it has grown, but it was not able to absorb the right things from the soil that will then be passed on to us. So yes, it's worth taking a multivitamin. Um, it's always also worth getting your blood checked to see what you're actually deficient in, rather than just blindly taking a multivitamin. Uh, what's the best cardio to do? Giggity, giggity. Yeah. No, I'll keep it clean. This is a UP Fitness page. Best cardio to do is the cardio that you enjoy doing regularly. Yep, I forgot the answer. Best thing I can suggest to you, madam, is to get a notepad and write that shit down. When's the UP nu Nutrition book out? Very, very, very soon. Samadice, is porridge a good breakfast? Oh, it's better than uh, a Knickerbocker Glory or a Banana Split, yes. However, is it the best breakfast for most people? Probably not. You want to start your days off with protein and fats, ideally, unless, of course, you are super, 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 super lean already, in which case, you can add some carbs into that mix as well, yeah. Gotta stay hydrated, folks. You want your brain to stay on top of things. Come on, what we got? If we run out of questions, I'm get the feeling that the uh, the Instagram TikTok o'clock is gonna come and shut me down fairly soon, so keep those coming. Would eggs be a better breakfast then? Absolutely, eggs would be a far better breakfast than, uh, say, porridge, for instance. Yeah, absolutely. Why? Because they are a complete protein, and very, very, very good protein eggs, plus they have fats and a lot of nutrients in the yolk. If you don't fancy meat, yeah, eggs, 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 eggs. I have personally, um, I say red meat tomorrow, but most mornings I have an omelet. I have a three egg omelet in the mornings. Reason being, even if I eat meat first thing in the morning, I'm a, I'm a fatty, okay, I am a fatty. I was always a fat as a kid. I was very, 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 very fat. Um, I lost a lot of weight, hence becoming a personal trainer. 
but my appetite is still that of someone who is used to eating seven or eight thousand calories a day. So I'm constantly thinking about food. If I eat red meat in the morning, if I eat any kind of meat, if I eat, certainly if I eat carbs, I don't even try it. My appetite is ravenous the whole day. Whereas just for some reason, for some reason, if I eat eggs first thing in the morning, my appetite for the rest of the day is pretty much under control. So uh, that is the lesser of two evils for me. Can you eat eggs every day? Yes, you can. Uh, cartin, Michelle. Um, there was a big, you know, back in the, I believe the 60s, and they decided, because they didn't know much about eggs, they were like, oh, no, eggs elevate cholesterol, they're so bad for you. Yes, they do, but what bodybuilders said back then, and has only just been picked up on in the last, in fact, I think it was two years ago, when the governments of the world finally turned around and said, yeah, do you know what, we were wrong. Um, eggs help to lower bad cholesterol and elevate good cholesterol, so they're very, very healthy food to eat. Potentially a superfood, might I say. Um, the governments have finally admitted this. So, you know, this is one of those things. Don't necessarily believe everything you hear because there's so much crap out there in the media. Do you know what? I'm going to say this actually. Pretty much safe to say anything that you hear on mainstream media is absolute bollocks. Yes, eggs are good for you. That was the shorter answer, eh? What's the best bread to eat? Whole meal, I've been told. Yeah, yeah. Again, you know, if you've got fat to lose, should you necessarily be chugging down loaves of bread? No, you shouldn't. Um, but if you're going to eat bread, get something that is closest to its natural form as possible. Is there an optimal length of time for a training session? For most people, anywhere between 40 and 50 minutes is about as, uh, enough. From a hormonal point of view, you're not overstepping a mark. <clears throat> and secondly, that's probably about the limit as to where you can keep intensity up. You know, there's obviously on every single part of the internet, every dirty, dark, deep corner, there'll be some douchebag saying, oh, shut up, mate, I can train for three and a half hours and I can keep the intensity up. Guarantee you, you couldn't train for 20 minutes with me and keep your intensity up. So 40 to 50 minutes, that's where, where you need to be looking as a maximum, really. I'm allergic to eggs. What's the best breakfast option instead? Christine, meat. Meat and fats. Jack Stubbs, laughing, laughing. Thanks for your time and answers. You're most welcome, Armand. When are you planning to do the next live video? I come on here every single Wednesday at 8 p.m. UK time, um, and I drip in and out of my own profile, which is at Elliot Upton, uh, here on Instagram. So I'm on, you know, I try to come on at least three or four times a week. Um, there will come a time when I come back onto this main channel more regularly, but for now I'm only here on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. The rest of the time you can see me over on my own profile. <clears throat> I need you to lose one and a half to two stone. I'm trying to watch what I'm eating. What's the best exercise to do daily and how long? I want to lose it by July-ish. Number one, I'm going to say, Sarah, is your weight means nothing at all. Forget your weight. Don't ever weigh yourself again. Go and take a photo in the mirror tomorrow morning and take a photo every single Thursday morning up until the point where you want to go away. That is your measure of success. Forget about your weight. It literally means nothing. And I can promise you that if that is what you're using, you're going to, you're probably going to fail. Okay. And not only that, you're going to create a very, very unhealthy mindset. Other than that, let's answer the rest of the question. The best exercises to do are big compound exercises. So get into the gym and learn how to weight train. Squat, deadlift, lunge, uh, pull-ups or pull-downs, overhead presses. These are the big bang for your buck exercises that are gonna burn the most calories per rep and get the fat off your fastest. Andrea, what yogurt would you recommend? I wouldn't recommend yogurt to anyone ever. Um, I don't, you know, I really, 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 really try to steer my, steer my clients away from dairy. <coughs> so far I'm hitting the gym at 5.45 a.m. Do I need to eat? Ideally, yes. Um, small amount of porridge, but uh, blah, 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 blah. listen, as a female, you can read what you want about intermittent fasting. As a female, to all of you out there, don't intermittent fast. Okay, this is not a good thing for you. Fasting and starving your bodies, girls, is not a good thing for you guys. You can kind of get away with it a little bit, a little bit, but again, I would suggest only doing it if you've got loads and loads of muscle that you're willing to lose. Um, with regards to what you should be doing beforehand, Elaine, makeup artist, don't fast. Doesn't matter what you read, don't fast. That's not a smart thing to do. Um, certainly not for body composition. For health reasons, yeah, maybe it can help out, but certainly not for body composition. And have a protein-rich breakfast before you go in. If you're not prepared to get up earlier than that to eat, then have something, you know, have your post-workout protein shake pre-workout. Right, guys, I have 90 seconds remaining. Instagram is gonna kick me off, so I'm gonna go quick fire on these next questions. I want to start working out in the mornings. Any tips for getting up and going early enough? Set an alarm and get to bed earlier. Get to bed earlier, because it's so many of you out there don't go to sleep early enough, and it's holding you back. Brilliant, thanks for the info. You're welcome. Queen Dia, what is your profile? I love these live Q&As. Uh, my profile is Elliot Upton. That's Elliot with two T's and U-P-T-O-N. 
Sarah, you're welcome. Karen, no problem. Andrea, no worries. I do hope we can watch this again as my phone died. It's just for you answering my question. I can't remember what the question was, otherwise I'd say it again. I've got 55 seconds. I'm going to try my best to save this live feed to post on YouTube. Now, the problem with that is I've tried to do that with the last three I've done, and for whatever reason, Instagram has not allowed me to do it. Um, ugh, damn you, Instagram, let's start a protest. Um, is running a good exercise to lose weight also? Leah, I would suggest no. If you want to lose body fat, um, if you want to look lean, you want to look good, then weight train. Uh, running is not really going to do much for you other than make you good at running. I'm a mother of three. I can't afford memberships. Do you have weights? I do have weights at home, though. Um, then we can write you an online training program that you can do at home if necessary. Then go to upfitness.com and check out the online training section now. I've got 19 seconds. I'm starting to talk really, really quickly. I've come way too close to the camera to be comfortable. You can see the wrinkles on my forehead. Thanks, Elliot. You're welcome, Mazilla. Goodbye. They stay live for the next 24 hours yes but i want to save it so they can stay live forever and we are ingrained in internet history for generations to come this is me peace out